2016, they found about 2% of the faculty of Harvard were uh, viewed uh, President Trump, I think, as okay or good. And I think in the 2020 election, the, the Crimson, your local paper there, uh, found 1% of the students voting for Donald Trump, which given that nationwide is about 50-50, was kind of shocking. Uh, does it concern you at all that you apparently have a, a great deal, a lack of ideological diversity at Harvard, and do you think that atmosphere is maybe one of the reasons why uh, there seems to be of such an outbreak of anti-Semitism at your institution? Is that is that question for me? That's the question for you. Yeah, and I'll ask okay. you. What are you, yeah. you going to do about? We, it? Do you think it's a concern? So we we strive to have as diverse a faculty as we as we can because we want to make sure that we are sampling from the broadest pool of talent available in the world. Right. Dr. Gay, a Harvard student calling for the mass murder of African Americans is not protected free speech at Harvard, correct? Our commitment to it's free speech. It's a yes speech. or no question. Is that corrected? Is that okay for students to call for the mass murder of African Americans at Harvard? Is that protected free speech? Our commitment to free speech. It's a yes extends. or no question. Let me ask you this. You are president of Harvard, so I assume you're familiar with the term intifada, correct? I've heard that term, yes. And you understand that the use of the term intifada in the context of the Israeli-Arab conflict is indeed a call for violent armed resistance against the state of Israel, including violence against civilians and the genocide of Jews. Are you aware of that? That type of hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. And there have been multiple marches at Harvard with students chanting, quote, there is only one solution, intifada revolution, and, quote, globalize the intifada. Is that correct? I've heard that thoughtless, reckless, and hateful language on our campus, yes. So based upon your testimony, you understand that this call for intifada is to commit genocide against the Jewish people in Israel and globally, correct? I will say again, that type of hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. Do you believe that type of hateful speech is contrary to Harvard's code of conduct, or is it allowed at Harvard? It is at odds with the values of Harvard. Can you but not say here that it is against the code of conduct at Harvard? We embrace a commitment to free expression, even of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment, Does that speech and not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of Jews and the elimination of Israel? When you that testify that you understand that is the def definition of intifada. Is that speech, speech according to the code of conduct or not? We embrace a commitment to free expression and give a wide berth to free expression even of views that are objectionable. You and I both know that's offensive. not the case. You are aware that Harvard ranked dead last when it came to free speech. Are you not aware of that report? As I observed earlier, I reject that characterization. It's the of data our shows it's true. Do you know what the number one hate crime in America is? I know that over the last couple of months, there has been an alarming rise of anti-Semitism, which I understand is the critical topic that we are here to discuss. That's correct. It is anti-Jewish hate crimes. And Harvard ranks the lowest when it comes to protecting Jewish students. This is why I've called for your resignation. And your testimony today, not being able to answer with moral clarity, speaks volumes. I yield back. Can you speak to the um, challenges that you've faced in condemning hate and acts of hate while making sure that students were heard. And also just want to appreciate the distinction that you made in one of your comments between what we can say and what we should say. And, um, and just say that, frankly, I think there's been an explosion, thanks to the previous president in part, that has shattered the norms of what is acceptable to say. And we're dealing with some of the effects of that. 
But what challenges have you faced in condemning hate and acts of hate while making sure students were heard? Um, you know, I have to say my my absolute goal is to ensure the safety of students and the continuity of our research and educational missions. And these recent um, events have troubled me deeply, and we have mobilized as a campus. I think the most important thing is first knowledge to understand that, as I mentioned in a previous answer, that our leadership, our students, and our faculty have to have knowledge. But way more importantly right now is these students are thrown together in classrooms, in laboratories, in dormitories every day. This is where the dialogue is taking place. And we have to ensure that they have the tools for constructive communication across differences. Ms. McGill, just weeks before the October 7 terror attacks against Israel, Penn hosted a Palestine Rights Literature Festival. The event featured Mark Lamont Hill, who was fired by CNN for calling for the destruction of Israel. It also hosted and, and uh, included a member of the Palestinian Youth Movement, which has con collaborated with anti-Israel terrorist and maybe most notably, Roger Waters, the really wacky former Pink Floyd vocalist. The same Roger Waters, by the way, who's publicly used anti-Jewish slurs, desecrated the memory of Anne Frank, and has dressed up as a Nazi and floated a pig balloon with the Star of David at, most, at many of his concerts. Why in the world would you host someone like that on your college campus to speak at the so-called Palestinian Rights Literature Festival. I appreciate the opportunity to discuss this. Uh, Anti-Semitism has no place at Penn. Why would you invite? Why would you invite? Why did you invite Roger Waters? And, you condemn uh, what Roger Waters stands for. Congressman, prior to the event, I issued a statement calling out the anti-Semitism of some of the speakers at that conference. Specifically, Roger Waters. Yes or no? Roger Waters simple, is among simple. them. So yes. you, you specifically called out a guy who floated pig balloons with the Star of David at his concerts. I called out I the haven't, I haven't seen the condemnation. I'm going to go look for it after this hearing. And I, I, hope, I, I hope I can find that well-recorded condemn, condemnation from you. I did call out the anti-Semitism of some of the speakers at a conference that had more than 100 people. In the aftermath and of the Palestinian rights festival, you and your board chairman wrote a memo outlining Penn's free speech policies. You said, quote, Penn does not regulate the content of speech or symbolic behavior. You wrote, including speech, quote, incompatible with the school's values. You went on to say that Penn does not have a policy against hate speech because, quote, defining and policing robust debate, even with respect to the most disturbing issues, is unwise. That, that's what you wrote. But in 2013, Penn canceled now Prime Minister Modi's scheduled keynote address at a Wharton-hosted economic forum in the face of opposition from Indian American professors. And for the past year, your administration has sought to punish Amy Wax, a tenured law professor for her stance on DEI and identity issues. And then you canceled an event with former ICE director Tom Holman due to disruptive student protest simply because he worked for former President Donald Trump. Ms. McGill, the fact is that Penn regulates speech that it doesn't like. Everyone gets this. Uh, no one more than the faculty and students who know exactly where the lines are that they're okay to cross. Why, why did Penn let Professor Ahmad Amala off the hook, who led hundreds of students in chanting, there's only one solution, Intifada revolution. Why does that professor still have a job at your university? Representative, our approach to uh, speech is as I identified, it follows and is guided by the United States Constitution, uh, which allows for robust perspectives. Uh, I disagree with the characterization uh, that we treat speech differently. Uh, and I can't discuss any individual disciplinary proceedings. The same goes for Penn Professor Ann Norton, who's repeatedly denied Hamas's worst, worst atrocities on October 7. Or how about Huda Fakhreddin, who romanticized the murder of over a thousand Israeli Jews as, quote, Palestine inventing a new way of life and clapped 
as a speaker said Jews should go back to Berlin and Moscow. Why does that professor still have a job at your university? I'm very troubled by what you're describing, Congressman, that kind of... uh, You're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You're defending it. You allow these professors to teach at your college. You create a safe haven for this type of anti-Semitic behavior. You said something earlier about anti-Semitism being symbolic of the larger society. Your university is a hotbed of it. And one of the reasons that we're seeing a rise of anti-Semitism and an unsafe environment for, for Jewish college students all over this country, you're largely responsible for it. Dr. Gay, an article in the Harvard Crimson dated October 10th, includes a statement from the Harvard Undergraduate Palestine Solidarity Committee, co-signed by 33 other student organizations at Harvard. I'd like to read the statement to you. Quote, we, the undersigned student organizations, hold the Israeli regime entirely responsible for all unfolding violence. How, Dr. Gay, do you reconcile the blatant hypocrisy of allowing your students a forum to promote and celebrate terrorist groups that make the rape and mutilation of women and children a core function of their operations, while at the same time working for years to combat sexual violence towards women, and by allowing a month to pass before addressing with a real plan and uh, the demonstrations and intimidations on your campuses, what message is this? And this delay conveying to your women on your campuses, I can only imagine how terrifying it is to be a Jewish woman on any of your campuses. Just last night, a Jewish student from MIT wrote to me that she felt fearful and was forced to leave her study group during her doctoral exams because someone in her group told her that the women at the Nova Festival deserved to die because they were partying on stolen land. Now, while I am grateful for your condemning of anti-Semitism in statements to your students and to this committee, it's not enough. There has been no real action to hold anti-Semitic students accountable for their behavior. They should be expelled. The bottom line is that the buck stops with university presidents and all students should feel safe on a college campus, especially in this case, Jewish women as it would be terrifying to know that my administration is not doing more than simply condemning student groups, perpetuating terrorist messaging.